Hi, everyone. Today on Open at Microsoft, I'm talking to one of my fellow PMs in Azure Data about GitHub Copilot in Azure Data Studio. Hey, Sabojet, thank you for being here today. Um, I think we should just dive right in and start talking about Copilot and Azure Data Studio. Correct. GitHub Copilot is an AI-powered code completion tool developed by OpenAI and Microsoft. It leverages machine learning models trained on vast amount of code to generate context-aware code suggestions directly within your ID. For the purpose of this demo, I would be using Azure Data Studio, and I've already installed the extension of GitHub Copilot in advance to speed up things. Okay. Before we look at any code, I have a really quick question because you've already mentioned code, and I know this is a flag for some people. So is is Copilot going to like have a copy of my code? Are they going to like share that? Are they going to do anything with that? Uh, the prompt or the token that you give to Copilot goes through multiple checks to identify PII, any toxic information, and once the AI model of Copilot generates the output, it again goes back to checks like duplicate detection or code quality before it is shown as an output to the user. And once this output is generated, whether the user accepts it or rejects it, Copilot forgets the token and the information via which it has reached to that output. So rest assured, all your data and information is safe in your hands. Okay. Awesome. Perfect. Thank you for clarifying that because I, I know that's been a concern and I just want to make sure. So hop on into the demo. Let's see what we've got here. Okay. Coming to the demo, I will take you through a sequence of codes to show how Copilot gives incorrect uh, output when it does not have a context of your database. And with the same prompt, it gives a different and possibly a correct output when we give more context to the AI model. So we are using the worldwide importers and we'll be using tables like sales invoice lines, sales invoice, uh, purchase order, and purchase order lines. So yes, so I have the prompts written, you know, I have to speed up things. So <laughs> good. So once I press enter, I see that the first copilot suggestion has arrived. Similarly, if I press enter here, I see another suggestion. Now I'll go ahead and run this code just to see that it runs perfectly fine. Right. Okay. So it looks like it's got the, the tables from Wide World Importers. Yes, it has got. Now, ideally, now we, I'm trying to, so we have multiple uh, columns here. I'm trying to get the description. I'm trying to get the quantity. I'm trying to get the contact person ID. So ideally, I have to basically run a join and try and try to select that data. Correct. So I have written the prompt for the same. Okay. And I'll go ahead, press and enter. I have, I have an output. Let's see if it runs perfect or not. Oh, it does not. Why? Because, yeah, it, it does not. Because it does not have the context of these tables. Okay, so okay. when you say context, so, what, what do you mean by that? Like we're connected to the database, right? Yes, we are connected to the database. But once it's trying to see, it's trying to select from the first table itself. Or So the first idea is description. So the description is in the sales invoice lines table and it tries to get something from there. And it's not able to get the complete information from the database. It's just trying to pick up data, correct? So I'll try to give more context to the data to Copilot so that it's able to give a better output. So just for the sake of it, I'll go and try this as script to create. Okay, so we find Again, the objects that we're dealing I with, right, in OE, and you've, you've, you've scripted them out, right? Okay. Yes. Okay. Yes, so we have these, we have these objects ready here for both of them. One is sales.invoices, one is sales.invoice lines. So we have both of them ready and I'm just going to use them. So you mean you already so, scripted them out 
right into a different window yes. or something. Okay, got it. I just scripted it in a notepad and I have just copied the objects here. Okay. I'll remove this suggestion. I'll go back. I'll see. Now you see it's it gives a different prompt. I press and enter, it gives a different prompt. Press and enter, it gives a different prompt. And we have the code here. We'll run it. And here we go. Oh, it takes some time. We get it. We get it. <laughs> yes. Now I'll I'll show you some some another interesting thing here. Just one more. I won't take a lot of time. Don't worry. Uh, yes. So I have. I'll try to script something different here, which I. have a completely different uh, where we do not have we have not taken the objects for this prompt and I'll try to see if it runs fine we see that it does these are two completely different tables where we do not have the context in this tab and here we see that this is also able to do a perfect join and give back exactly the data that we want. Now, the reason for this is very simple. Now, when, when we are running, when we are putting a prompt in Copilot, it goes and checks in all your tabs to see if it can find some information. So in my previous tab, I had already declared these objects. And so it was able to, call, it was able to take that data and form the correct query on this tab. Okay, so let me let me restate this to make sure, right? If I just open up Azure Data Studio and I open up a query window and I'm connected to a database, one of my servers, right? I can start writing just with the the two dotted lines, right? The two dashes, and then I start writing my right. prompt, right? Correct. But at that point, it really doesn't have any context about maybe the objects and it's just going to kind of do a best guess right yes okay so if i want it to be more accurate then i really want to give it that context which is scripting out the um the ddl the data definition language for those objects having that in a query window and then when i'm asking it my question or writing my prompt then it uses that information and gives me a much more correct, accurate statement, right? That's correct. That's correct. Okay. Awesome. And then um, if I remember correctly, in addition, we're using SQL here, right? SQL Server as an example, but there's multiple database platforms, languages that are supported. So if I have MySQL and I've got the MySQL extension installed, I can write MySQL in the same way that I could with T-SQL. Yes. Perfect. Yes. Perfect. Awesome. Uh, this is amazing. How long do you think it took you to kind of like figure out the right way to write your prompts? Like, was that? Oh, just a hit and try. Just a hit and try. Just, you play around with it. You find new ways. Even if you, if if our users find something interesting, they can write to us, and we we'll try to figure out how it is done, and we'll try to inform more users. Yeah. I noticed you use fetch and I use like list or like get. So there's different way, different verbs basically, right. That you can use and you'll, you'll get that information and then we'll get the same information. Yeah. And then the other thing that I have noticed is that it does a really good job, but sometimes it's not perfect, but still it gives me a really good starting point from which to work moving forward. Correct. Somebody who's into database development, like in the starting of his career or, you know, learning it, this can be really helpful. Yeah, agreed. Awesome. Well, thank you so much for taking time today and for showing us that, Saboja. I appreciate it.